Chronic Illness Pod here, probably your one and only true source behind the lives of someone living with chronic illness. Chronic Illness! Hi, welcome to our podcast where we explain what is it like being chronically ill to us. This is Janice. This is Utra, and I'm wanting, and we are your hosts for this podcast. podcast. All of us have kidney-related chronic illnesses, and we want to show you our side of the story. Hey, today's, what's about what's today's episode about? Today's theme will be about health challenges that we have faced. With today, um, episode will be about challenges we face regarding our health. So today's main theme will be about our um, challenges with our health during our childhood and especially during our schooling days. Early schooling days? Because, I mean, Janice, you and me are still schooling. Yep, early schooling days. And I'm working. Uh, yeah. Odd one out, one thing, odd one out. <laughs> no, I'm also working part time, so. Well, I'm odd one out then. <laughs> oh well, let's start. Oh, well, well. Okay, so. I guess. Alright, so I felt angry that I didn't have any friends while all of the other kids did, especially like from kindergarten to. I mean, primary to almost most of secondary school, I really was alone. I would just yeah. be very, very alone. And like, yeah. I used to love playing sports or any group activity. I just be excluded because everyone was like, I don't want you. You can be in that group. I was like the volleyball thrown across. And the teacher would have to designate a group at one point of time for me. Mm. For me, it was because um I did remember having friends during primary one. And then after that, everyone just didn't kind, kind of just didn't want to be friends with me. And then um it ended up being like, I'm being like thrown around. Volleyball. Yeah. Lovely. Very lovely. Mm. And I was also jealous that I, they, that I could not have snacks that they had, such as like chocolates, because chocolates have high potassium. Uh, dialysis was trying its best to extract the potassium. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like an artificial kidney for anyone who doesn't know. And yeah. in that way, it. Do not burden it more. You can't have a uh, high potassium food, and hence so I couldn't have like chocolate, ice cream, and a bunch of other things, like cakes mostly. Mm. And this ended up being a very big hindrance because I I didn't like it. I was lucky if I got like a snack of one biscuit or two. So I agree with you. I agree with you, Ojira. Being a chronic illness patient, we always have have to watch our diet and also watch our fluid. So for you listeners out there who, who doesn't know what I'm talking about, it's basically uh, we have a certain fluid amount that we are allowed to drink within a day. So for me, um, if let's say the doctor mm-hmm. or one of the specialists say, okay, so for today you're only allowed to drink 500. And within this, within like morning to night, you are allowed to drink this amount. More than that, it's considered fluid overload. And this is... This in return causes a uh, swelling on the face and your legs and your bit in your feet. And like literally feet. every part of your body. Yeah, every bar- part of the body. Only and dialysis is and that and dialysis is a only, only way to extract body. those toxins out of your body system. Mm, yeah. Daisy reference. Yes, we used to name our machines. Get over with it. Ooh. I I had a very funny name for my dialysis machine. Oh my gosh, I want to hear it. <laughs> because my my elder sister, which I don't want to name her in this podcast, she would tell me that being on dialysis is basically being in jail. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that's a very bad way to understand. That is a very bad and comparison. Would, yeah. And 
she would tell me like, oh, don't you need to go and connect in your jail now? Cause it's like around, <laughs> cause it's already 11 p.m. Don't you need to connect in your jail? Oh my gosh, that is so bad. So to her, me being on a dialysis machine is basically like a criminal who didn't even do anything wrong and still ended up being in jail <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Continue with your story. What happened to okay, your Okay, so, so what is the name? Can we go like straight forward? Yes, what's the name? Uh, I would call my dialysis machine a jail center. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a very funny nickname for my dialysis catheter. I still keep it because I want to use it for art purposes. I would call my dialysis catheter monkey tail. <laughs> So I call it a mic girl because I like to sing, so it's my mic. And oh, it is funny because I would, I whenever I'm in the dialysis room, I whenever when I'm doing my dialysis, I would always use my catheter as a mic to sing to all my favorite songs. Oh and I would then when I and you know what's the best part? I would be dancing to very difficult choreography while on dialysis. Oh my gosh. No. Wow. No. Just... Wow, you're you very slay, but you could have literally yanked that tube out. That's <laughs> <laughs> very true, but my lovely mic has <laughs> gone due to transplant. <laughs> but it was nice while my mom yeah, used to call it. It was nice while it lasted. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, my mom used to call it monkey tail, but very specific monkey. I'm not knowledge, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. monkey, so that I would not feel very bad. It was a valorous monkey, so well, that's gone. I do not have a tail. <laughs> Yay! Yay! I'm sorry for the dark humor edition. It's okay. <laughs> I think dark humor is quite a vital part of our lives. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. Mm. And also, I will miss out on school a lot. And also, I have this very perfectionist mindset of you oh, better get your yeah. blood proper. You, you you need the blood proper, otherwise your doctor gonna score you like hell. Oh and my god! I, yes. god, I can relate. I can relate mm. because like I I've been like a perfectionist since thirteen years old because when I was very young, uh, my parents put a lot of pressure on my two elder siblings so i've actually in my family i'm the youngest well while i have an elder brother and an elder sister so being the elders they put most of the pressure on my elder siblings telling them that they had to get an a in every single subject i do remember one incident where one where my elder sister didn't score well in a general paper and uh my mom ended up chiding her and I remember her crying on the floor next to the toilet telling that telling my mom that she would do better the next round. Oh no. Thanks. Asians, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and also because I'm the youngest in my family, I being the one the only person struggling with a chronic illness, my my dad was the one to put the most pressure on me and he would tell me to get an A in every single subject. And also the mm-hmm. fact that um because um when I was like about ten or eleven, my grandma's health started to like suffer a little because of her own habits. Um I feel that there's like this prejudice around where like um people would try to pretend like especially people with chronic illness would try to pretend they're not chronically ill. Yeah. Remus Lupin wives. Anyone who's a potter head is just Remus Lupin yeah. wives. And also, and also the fact that um, whenever my grandma would try to complain about her symptoms, mm. she would act like I'm not chronically ill. Mm. And then she would be like, nah, you can't relate to it, you're too young. Mm. Like, <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I. That is going to be used. Mm. Don't relate, you say. I have been suffering this since I was five, people. Five. So yeah. I have been doing this yeah. since I was one and a half years old. I have been on dialysis since I was 13 years old. Like, come on. And I'm still doing it till today. So don't you dare have the audacity to tell us that you can't relate to. That we can't relate. Like, you know, like, I know, like... 
I know that oh, cause you're tired. Like, I just feel that um, oh, she's like oh, you won't really do it. You're too young. Like, I'm like what? Excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. What's the difference? Am I too young? You say I have suffered this from when I was five. So yeah, yeah I have not too young. I, I, I have been young. through more than you. So certainly, whatever donuts you're gonna share with me, I definitely can relate. Yeah, I probably can relate to you. What you're yeah. gonna say? And I would like to add another thing to being a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So like. Have you ever, have you guys had that idea where, you know, when you flunked in something, you will be very hard on yourself? So that really, really happened to most of us where like, mm, yeah. you know, like you fail one subject or like you flunked your medical uh, results. You'll be yes. very hard on yourself, not just today, but like the next day you'll be like having self-doubts about yourself like, uh, mm. I shouldn't have consumed this food. Oh, uh, yes, I, I exactly. should have cut down on my weight and yeah. all the shows, all the food that just comes out in your head, and then suddenly your inner critic starts to beat you up for like and no reason. Be up for like literally like um, just enjoying food. Yeah. Yeah. So for any Indian students or any Asian students, you know when you enter the exam hall, right, T, and come out, and you're like. And I remember that answer. I can't believe it, right? So the exact same feeling when you get the medical result. Like, oh, why did I eat that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, 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 that's the feeling we have. Okay, you don't need to think that we are very, very abnormal. And, we don't understand. Yeah, do. yeah. <laughs> and it's so nice, right? When you receive like the medical report, and then the doctor does praise you that, hey, you know, today your your medical results are are so stable, but then you're still <gasps> oh not gosh. happy. You're still not happy with it. Like you're still dissatisfied about your medical report. No, no, no. Yourself, and then you'll tell yourself that I felt like I could have uh, done better. You know. Mm -hmm. like, like um, they would say like hey, your results are quite like consistent. You know, because um, they're like oh nice, that's great. Um. I actually, for me, I would feel I feel very um complimented. So I'll be like, oh, that means I'm doing great, I guess. Then I just gotta keep doing this. But at the same time, you can't let your gut down because yeah, for transplant patients, you will ne you will never know when your kidney is gonna fail just because of a certain spike in your results. Yeah, or a, a freaking random virus. Feel the rush of relief that you feel. Oh, thank God that did you know? Thank God the doctor didn't do this thing. Scold me. That's the honestly oh that's the feeling we get. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree. I can totally agree. Yeah, with me that. too. Me too. And also like the fact that um, the fact that once we start. Because we had our, we know our condition since we were very young. We also had to go through the process of understanding our chronic illness, basically. But, but for a lot of people, it might be maybe they are a bit more grown up. But for us, we were very very young when we had to do that. Basically, I I felt like. We didn't have the time to process through all those very important mo emotions like yeah. joy, sadness, anger, fear, disgust. Even as uh, bad things befall upon us, we we have this tendency like, oh, we are a warrior. We have to have this resilience to overcome anything that gets into our way. Oh my gosh, but, yes. But, but people see the joy behind our brilliant bravery of fighting throughout mm. those IV plugs throughout all those scary procedures but yeah. the truth is we didn't have the time to process what what mm. went, whatever we went through I still remember there was this once I had to be rushed to the ICU because there was some stuff that happened which mm. I would reserve for maybe a later episode because I'm not comfortable talking about it right now on the podcast sure. no problem um so yeah that was kind of traumatic for me and also the fact that how we put up a brief front and basically a persona 
Yes, and for me, right, um, I had like a couple of times where like medical professionals would tell me like, "Hey, you're like being really brave," and like, and I would actually feel very complimented, and I'll be like, "Hey, I should just continue doing this," you know. But then but after that, long, but all in the long break run, loose. your mental self will break definitely. Yeah, all hell's break loose. So please don't not do that. But, I um, I would like to quote something from uh one of the BTS members. Yungi, he he actually said that you were born to be real, not perfect. So, as someone struggling with a chronic illness, it's okay not to be brave because mm. with fear comes courage. It's okay if you're struggling to yeah. overcome and cope with whatever you're going through. It's okay because yeah. because um. Not, not like any normal healthy people would go through this, and yeah. you are already doing your best mm. with whatever resources you have. Alright. Um, you all know the song uh born for this. That's technically I feel like our song. Mm. Because really? I feel like that part where you know the part where it comes. Look at this. Ooh, what? What is it? <laughs> that part thing. That that just. <laughs> okay. okay. What did you want to say? Are you trying to make a blue voice or what you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, what did... Uh, I'll start recording Jenny's for two minutes. <laughs> I just needed a blooper, sorry. Alright, who's next? <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, do you want to share anything? Any health um, challenges? For me, I would say about... um. I think most of my very perfection perfectionist mindset actually came from my medical test results. Mm. So from a very early age, I had to try and actually manage to take care of myself. Mm. Like you know, take care of my medications. Take oh care yes, of the part where every checkout, right? The doctors will ask you, okay, so, uh. Renomin, how much are you taking? Kalubilo, how much are you taking? And then it becomes like a regular yes. test exam and then they will ask yes. even not just the doctors they will ask you. Eh. Sometimes even the the medical students will ask you, okay, what oh, what medication are oh you my taking? Gosh. Like yes. like for once everyone can agree that at every checkout the doctors will ask you, okay, how much mm. are you taking? And then yeah. if for dialysis issues they'll ask you, oh uh, what is your therapy volume? What uh, what is your therapy yes. hours? Uh, how much fluid are you God. taking per day? And like yes. medication, what is the dosage? Everyone can agree yes. with that. Yes, yes. literally, was- literally, they were just asked. It's like a mini quiz, you know. Yes, mini quiz every day for checkup. Oh, prepare for this one. Not gonna lie, I felt like I was like memorizing a script. <laughs> I need to put it out there. So anyone who's like, oh my god, I can't mug up my textbook. I can't mug up this. We had to mug up a whole medical list when I was five, okay? Five, yeah. two, yeah. whatever yeah. age. We were just mm-hmm. mugging up our medicine doses. Yes. The volume for whoever was on dialysis. Um, Like one thing, I had to memorize like, the therapy volume, the, the hours that I do dialysis. So, hey, you're just mugging up things. We have understood, memorized, and gone through the process. Yeah. And because you know what's the for- and you know what is the worst part on being on dialysis? It's like at random, at random checkups, the dialysis nurses will like randomly out of the blue conduct like a quiz. Like okay, so today for today's quiz, we are going to test on your hand washing skills. <laughs> oh my! God. <laughs> and then out of, and, and sometimes out of the blue, they will like take out uh. Uh, iPad. I remember it was a Super Mario iPad, and then one of the dialysis nurses will like give you a test. Okay, so today we're gonna give you a test on exit site infection. As if there were not enough tests in our school, in our medical, in our medical condition, there's also tests to deal with. Like, I swear, by the end of. Of my life, out my brains will be definitely fried. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I swear that, that that medical test, they'll be like, "We're gonna question you on that." I'm like, "I am not prepared on this right now." Behind the lives of someone living with chronic. 
Mm-hmm. The dialogue is we're gonna continue on hand washing technique. We're gonna have a practical on exits or exits are infection or oh yes. Oh my god. Finally gosh. something that all of us can relate. I mean for me because when I was like, on there since I was way too young so I don't mm. think I needed to remember that because it was more of my parents sort of job because I was very young. Mm. Yeah, so not maybe that point but was but more of the you know when you go to your appointment they will just quiz you on what medications you're taking. And also oh no 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 and you know what what test results to look out for? Yeah. Not like, yet. Like, nice. like I, I know, I know by heart. It is, um, it is, um. Correct. Oh and, it, and it's quite ironic that each time I receive my medical report, you know what? What are the first few things I will look at? I will look at my creatinine. I will look at my potassium. I will look at my sodium also. I will look at my, my phosphate. I will look at basically look at your, everything. Look at your... I will sometimes look at my iron and my and my platelets as well as my okay. white and red blood cells. Okay, I mean, but I, I mean, think I mean, the most important to look at, right? For me personally, that's what I learned from being a transplant patient is to look at your tag, look at your creatinine. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, those two are very important, and then um, and then your electrolyte stuff, you know, afterwards, viral concerns that they might have because um. Because I kind of found out how do they like prescribe the medications, like how much do they prescribe? Because <laughs> like someone did tell me, I'm not even lying. Like like someone told me, so I was like, you know how the uh Michael Finalate is given, right? The surface area of your body is calculated, yeah. and then that's how yes, I do know yeah. that. I I, <laughs> exactly. do, I do remember like for the timing of the MMF, it's given. You have to take it like every hour. Am I correct to no. say that? No, 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 you're not correct. It's morning and night. Depend uh. depending on your dose because immune suppressants are actually okay, correct me if I'm wrong, but someone they actually told me that immune suppressants um how do they um give you the dose for immune suppression is they titrate it with your electrolytes. Mm, correct. That's true, very true. They do titrate it with your electrolytes plus your tech level. Mm. Um, with that only they actually give you any medication like that. Um, yeah, exactly. So a lot of calculations to be done, and mm. um, and I I suddenly just knew that because someone told me about it. Mm. I just observed very much, and I know that they. I think this is no. Fun. How the heck do you observe and know the titrating thing? Because um, I wouldn't have realized that. My doctor is very strict that her uh, coalescence of follows student would be there she would literally tell the calculation so you just literally remember to keep going oh my gosh oh yeah my i think God. i also had that kind of experience <laughs> <laughs> i may not know the surface area of the cube but i do know how to calculate my makeup finale okay mm-hmm. 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 i definitely know <laughs> 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 Let's move on, Janice. Otherwise, I think people are gonna be like, I do not know what they're doing. <laughs> Maybe falling asleep to our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let's let's move on. So, uh, for me, I my health challenges was basically uh being discriminated and oppressed not just by the society, but also mm-hmm. by my classmates in school through my growing up years. They felt like my condition was very, like, it's like chicken pox. It's like easily can spread anywhere. Oh my but gosh, yes, mine too. Actually, that is not true. Can if failure or like whatever chronic illnesses that we're going through, it's actually not, not like, oh, like if I get it, the, per- the other person not gets contagious. it. It's not contagious. It's not true. It's not even that contagious. But people would have this, uh, label upon us that mm-hmm. those with medical conditions or like mental health conditions are a monster mm-hmm. we are crazy or yeah. like we have we are very bad at, at, at controlling our eq and, and like mm-hmm. whatever tasks are given upon us it will just flunk it but that is actually not the case mm-hmm. and the bullying i remember it actually started from a very young age so Same. sometimes uh they would call me nicknames some it, the worst nickname that I've been called was named after food, and you know what was the name of the food? Wonton noodles. And one of my classmates actually like mocked me and then called me wonton me. 
That was like the worst nickname I ever been called. Oh my and gosh, mine was. And then sometimes, uh, in classes, and I know myself being the most diligent and most obedient student in my in all of my cohort. For no reason, early in the morning, boys would just come to my table, and then they would just vent vulgarities at me, like literally rent an effort in my mm-hmm. face, or like. Sometimes throw rubbish like staples, mm-hmm. paper aeroplane, oh, and yeah. on I had my hair. And I do remember coming home after school, and in my bag there were like a lot of staples and a lot of paper in my bag. Oh my gosh! Yes, and, mine too. And it the bullying got so serious that at one point in secondary school, I almost attempted suicide. Yeah, same. Mine was there, but it was more of neglect. Mine was more of a neglect type of thing. Mine is not that severe, I mind you. Um, but I will feel very bad because I do not want to disclose more about me. Uh, mm. until I feel more confident. Um, mm. is that I will also have other things that I would do. Mm. Uh, due to my health condition, there were some side effects that I had, mm. had, and I had some more issues. So I will go to try and you know help with those issues. And so, and because, always, yeah, um, and, yeah. and because of the bu- of the various bullying incidents, I had I actually lost trust in the society. I lost mm-hmm. faith in humanity, and it also made it very hard for me to find a relationship, which I will dis- which both of our hosts, Janice and I, will disclose in the next episode. Yeah. So moving on to uh employment issues, I felt that it was very hard for me to find a job. Uh, because mm-hmm. uh, each time when uh, when the employer looks at a, at your form and then it, he or she discovers that oh you have a chronic condition mm, I'm sorry but I don't think you are up for this job you are not a uh, you are not suited for our work environment yeah, yeah and, and also, and and also the fact, fact that um, because of that I was like because of like other people's stories, other people with chronic illness, and like them not being able to get a job made me very worried. Correct. And so I didn't really apply my first job until like this year. Oh, same. I only, I, I only remember applying for a job around uh, three to four times, and out of the four tries, I bas- I basically didn't get any interview or reply for the employer i don't remember getting a reply for for an interview but only to end up getting rejected just because of my medical condition and then the next day i got an email from an employer saying that uh we're sorry we have already found another suitable applicant for this job and then the worst part is they don't even ex- they don't even give a reason like why why am I not why am I not suited for this job? It also makes me feel no motivated. Why do I need to study if I might not get a job in the future? What's the right. point of Yeah, like what is the point of studying when our future is not even that secured at all? It's not even destined. We, we, like, for a non person, it's like you study, go to university, you can get a job. For us, yeah. study. Yeah. There's this Asian get... context. I believe there's this Asian context. Like, in your life, your role is to study, work, get married, have children. Correct. And, and then the I, cycle repeats again. And the cycle repeats again. But I, I want to tell to all the listeners, guys, without marriage, you can still live, you can still survive. Don't worry, you won't die. Yes. Like, like yeah. you won't die, but you might be lonely. Even but, but if you have enough money, you probably yeah, can sustain yourself. Yeah, basically, yourself cert somehow. and grades do not determine everything. Yeah, especially for us, it's more like study, go to university that will accept you, and then you may or may not get a job. We are not sure about that, and then. Get married, some people are like, okay, some people are no if they're understanding. And have mm. children is like out of the question for me. I need to take care of myself, people. I can't handle two little minions or three little minions around the house. And I so I also can't for the fact that, you know, because our like um 
like especially our like transplanted kidney right it is um is within like the area where the baby can kick like the oh, fetus can kick so imagine the yes. fetus being able to kick on the on your f- organs which oh. already happens in real life to mm. people who don't even have transplants yeah so imagine your transplanted kidney imagine that is your kidney that only only kidney that kind of works fully and then your baby kicks on it oh that would really suck man yeah which is why um maybe it's not a good idea for us to get pregnant yeah 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 <laughs> probably not i mean you can adopt a kid if you want yeah. I mean, if you're up for it if you feel up for raising a minion of your own then I yeah would, i would want a kid you know like yeah. Yeah. You know, um, mm. you know, I when I was younger, because of how I grew, I used to have like a dream, like oh, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be working, like working, and then raising like a few children, like a few mm. kids with my husband in the future. Correct. But obviously, it is not really that possible unless I adopt a kid. Yeah. Like, it's not the most possible to get pregnant lah. There, yeah. there are risks that comes with it lor. Yes, correct. Mm. Because like, there's this genetics issue as well. Like, if one, one side of the family has kidney failure or diabetes, there's a high probability that the child in the, in the fetus might also have the same condition. Yeah. I think mine is close to the same. My... Paternal grandma had like had to be on hemodialysis. I think I might have uh have that. And uh, uh for everyone who has chronic illness, please do not blame your mother or that. Why did my grandma have it? Please don't. Just take care yeah, of your own don't, health. Don't don't blame your parents. Just take care of yourself. It's fine. Mm. I've done that. Gone kicked by the nurse. What? What? <laughs> Girl, elaborate. <laughs> yeah, please elaborate. <laughs> okay. I guess it may be gossip, but anyway, not the main one. So, <laughs> okay, so I was like in all 10. I thought my mom, like, what? I was very, um, what type of kid? A nerdy kid, like, on bio. So I would be like, Mom, what did you have that had this effect on me? And she said it, and we ended up telling the nurse as well. And the nurse that I happen to have was the strictest nurse around, the most grumpy, grouchy nurse. Oh no! Oh no! And she's like, if you ever tell your mom like that, I swear I'll kick you. <laughs> and oh my gosh. I'll just, I'll just shut my mouth. I'll just shut my mouth. I won't do anything. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> okay. okay, got it, ma'am. I won't do anything like that. Mm. And I also would like to add another point to what uh, Utira also said Like uh, missing out on strenuous activities And yes. certain uh, modules due to hospitalization mostly And I also would like to elaborate on what I mean by strenuous activities So basically when I was in secondary school I had a huge passion for performing arts because basically mm. I spent my whole childhood being a dancer basically all my dancers will learn from those cartoon shows like High Five and like you know it's very, it's very adorable because every mm. time when the High Five theme song turns on I would just dance to it and I would learn the choreography within like 3 seconds so my aspiration since young was to actually be a dancer and like actually to expand into that be a dance therapy to like teach all like the kids on how to like dance but unfortunately i knew my my dream wouldn't last because uh uh when i tried to apply for various performing arts schools i get rejected and sometimes even though i even for cca I remember I had a very huge passion for choir because I love singing. You can you can tell already by the opening yeah, intro. One, two, I can sing so well that I can even eat like eight octaves. But then the teachers had like a very bad stereotype against like those with chronic illnesses that oh you know how huh? uh you you need to uh be you need to have very good stamina like every day for choir you need to exercise and that's 
that is not only for choir eh. even those for like uh like those who are in band or or like those in uniform okay. groups all need Can exercise I? and I want to change that that stereotype that okay. hey who who uh-huh. says like those with chronic illnesses cannot join TCA's related to performing arts okay, or uniform so groups. I I have a chronic illness I was in band yes primary and secondary school yeah um, so. For me, I got into band in secondary school mainly because of my skills that I've attained in primary school. Yeah. I, um, because my secondary school that I went to, the band was like one of the top CCAs in the school. Mm. Like, it was like very fancy and everything. Mm. So like the entry requirements were kind of just a bit like not the best for me. Mm. So what happened was, um, since um, they didn't even want to ask me about my medical condition, yeah. because um, because on my like, on my thing, I had musical experience. Mm. They were looking for that, and I had double the experience because mm. I think right, even if I had only one experience, I probably wouldn't even get in at all. Mm. So um, it was like a close. Close one maybe, but um because of how I was in band during primary school and I played piano, so I had quite a bit of musical experience already. Mm. So for me, I he plays yeah. me in a lot of instruments if they want to. Mm. For me, I felt like I I really did have an interest in joining like performing arts but the thing is I wasn't even given like an opportunity let alone a chance to give us to be given like tryouts for a for a for a CCA that or that I was interested in. So ended up I had no choice but to join library club. Which is quite cool because in in library club there's aircon and then you get to learn all sorts of skills like uh uh book repair, shelving and that slowly like kind of became my 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 second job because uh I do have a job which is like at McDonald's but on my off day I do volunteer at a uh, national library where basically the job scope is the same as my library CCA so all you do is just shelf food so it's quite fun eh? and then sometimes when there's no uh no students you get to read books for free that's great yeah um for me i was thankful that i grew up in a kind of good school that was i like, didn't care that i had a chronic illness yeah and i had a talent to sing so I got in uh, i passed the audition mm. i actually got on a magazine like school magazine so mm. so uh Utira, don't mind me asking uh do you mind saying like one line of the song that you are that you really love the most to our listeners who are, li- who are paying attention to our podcast um sure um I just get, one I'm line like one line like the chorus line of uh i think born for this because it's most relatable to the podcast all right so, sure so go ahead sure. I believe, I believe, we can write a story. I believe, I believe, we can have, we, we can be an army. We are the warriors who come to love the pain. We come from different places, but have the same name. We were, and we were, and we were born for this. We were born for this. Mm-hmm. Wow! Nice, nice vocal. Yeah, that was really great. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was that um, was some nice thing out there. Yeah, I I guess maybe you and me someday could be, could do it to a song. <laughs> that would be quite fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because originally during um during secondary school, I did have um I did have wishes to join other performing arts CCA like probably yeah. drama. Ooh drama or choir so i could have ended up in a very very different path mm. but the problem was okay um the problem was since ben was such sort of quite highly regarded in my secondary school mm. um the band auditions occurred first before the choir and like the rest of the ccas mm. so what happened was for ben um they were like okay i'm gonna 
we're gonna like let you in because like obviously you have experience Mm. So yeah, and afterwards, I feel like even though I was in band, I like sometimes I really feel like I didn't belong there. Mm. Like I feel like I didn't deserve to be there because, um, because of how people were like soft treating me, you know, and then giving you the side eye judgment, right? Yeah. Why is she here? Probably even for my auditions, right? Whenever I went to audition, I was like, why is this girl even here? I had the talent to sing yeah. as a young girl. Yeah, 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 I agree with you. So, um, I would yeah. go for the audition because I like that. So, why not go? Um, I think I'm a Barbie girl for the audition. Oh my gosh. No, because I literally, um, I, um, I didn't get to like go to performance, not necessary. Probably not necessary that I necessarily that I stuck. It's just that, um, because of not being able to participate in strenuous activity. Con- for context, the yeah. band that I was in was both a concert and a marching band, so yeah. I wasn't able to perform in like the marching band activities. Oh. Because of strenuous activity and stuff And you'll be like under the hot sun And then like Because the medications have effect on your skin When you're under the hot sun So you can't do that So you can like just throw that out of the sky Whatever So yeah you're not gonna do that Oh if you're on dialysis The Oh it caught like the Tegadum would just come off (laughs) Yeah 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 very true So Throw that out of the window, rail. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I, I can I imagine. I can imagine Utsuya playing ball games, and then halfway the diagonal decides to fly away by itself. <laughs> 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 and then half the time I'll come home, and my mom will be like, "I have have my crop in my bag, okay, in case of this type of emergency." If I was, uh, then do you put it the- back? That's the whole point. Yeah, that's the whole point. Humpty oh. Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. <laughs> no king horses here for the other. I and maybe um nobody really told me this but maybe because of my medical like my health condition, um, you know when I entered right, there was nobody with like in my cohort during in band ma in my cohort there was nobody with a band experience and piano at the same time there was nobody like that and it was literally just me and it felt really off because like because um because of like how how i have so like quote unquote so much experience i've just like people Probably in band expected quite a bit from me Ooh. because like I was like oh determined to do something good because obviously of my experiences and stuff Ooh. but um I like I thought like maybe I might become a band leader during like secondary two or secondary Ooh. three Ooh. but end up I didn't like someone else took the positions because. Mm. As a band leader, you probably have to take charge of the marching thing at the same time. So, and I couldn't really do that because of my own health. Mm. So I lost out on I lost out on that part, which I was very envious of my friends for honestly. Because mm. I wish like I could have done that, and um, it's kind of like I'm just jealous. Cause like my friends can become the band leaders and they can like you know when you take feel up like leadership. I have, experience. Like, I have more experience. I should have gotten this, but my health is kind of stopping me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also the fact that um, not really a lot of people like had a lot of sympathy. Like they'll just be like, oh, just just go along with it. Like I will be like. Hey, um, can you help me carry something? Because it's very heavy and I felt very, very tired. So imagine walking from the band room to the practice rooms. 
Oh. And our practice rooms were the classrooms. Oh. And there was like a one freaking bridge that we had to walk or we had to climb the stairs with our instruments and the stands. Oh. But don't so, mind me asking, how long was the bridge? Uh, I'm not sure, but it was kind of long. But we ha- sometimes we had to climb the stairs. How many flights of stairs did you have to climb, by the way? Like one or two floors. Oh, that must be very tiring. Yeah. But that was with my instrument. <gasps> oh! But that's and double whammy. That was yeah, that with my instrument the and then musical stands. Mm. Um, like, it's just really Damn. heavy lah, because I was really struggling to carry some stuff mm. up and down the stairs. And um, I literally had to ask people for help, like, hey, can you guys help? Like, because I really cannot carry some something that this heavy and I feel very, very tired already. Mm. Like it's so bad Because like I had to go up and down And then my instrument isn't small either That makes it even worse But yeah I My instrument is like, basically a mini tuba So yeah you, can, you guys can imagine Like a Like a smaller tuba Which is quite big mm. Yep Definitely yeah. not good Because yeah. that would be heavy I had And we weren't allowed to take the lifts. <gasps> oh no, this is like the worst part. Like, you know, in M- I in like MRTs, they will tell you, if you're carrying heavy objects, please use the lift. But wow. When you like, like we had to take the stairs. Like, yeah, I was like, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. Praise my, praise Lai Lai, praise everyone. Yeah. And I had to carry some stands uh, sometimes or another. And, um, the stands were not plastic stands, they were metal stands. Yeah. Metal Mother stands, wow. Mm. And like, I think how, because how, I'm so scared that whether is it cause how much I ask people to help me, that's why they undermine my abilities to play. Mm. And it shouldn't be, have been that way. They should have understand, understood at the first point that, hey, maybe I might not be able to carry as much as you, but I might be as capable as you, mm. like in musicality wise. And I guess that's something you want to let the listeners out there to know. That, yeah. Um, hey, despite our chronic illnesses, we can still do so much more than that. Yeah. Like, for example, okay, so we can like carry, we maybe we can't carry as much stuff as you because it's weighing on our body very very hard mm-hmm. and our bodies weren't even as strong as you guys to begin with. Yeah. Um, I just feel that um, you guys can help us to carry the items if we ask you to but please don't just judge us, judge our like performance because of that. Yeah, like... I quote from TikTok, please don't give us the bombastic side eye. Criminal no, 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 side eye. Side. <laughs> please do not, like, guys. Please, um, the, uh, please, if you have any negative comments or stereotypes, keep them amongst yourself. Keep them to yourself. Please. Yes. Yeah, it's just that I think, I think it's that maybe people might have undermined my abilities and also the fact that, um, in like CCA, mm. um, especially we had um, we had like um, members who have already graduated. They will come back and help, mm. but they will kind of like just like put me aside. Mm. But um, I think most of them, most of them were guys, by the way. Um, they sort of like treated me differently than my other section mates. Mm. Yeah, and actually, there's one more thing I would like to highlight with regards to chronic, uh, chronic, uh, health conditions. I would also like to highlight the importance of chronic mental health, health conditions. conditions. Yeah, I feel like uh, both of these are correlated in a sense where, uh, for those who are on dialysis therapy or be it hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, the mental health strain on us is very huge and. I even feel like the, I, too. Yes, I feel that the uh, that uh 
that the understanding of mental health condition isn't that well educated amongst the public, especially mm-hmm. amongst my parents or my siblings. Because just, all they can tell you, uh-huh. like, you know, when you share something very personal with them, all they can tell you is just one phrase go for therapy. Or, like, I just feel that, um, Amongst, especially amongst like older generation people, yes, they are. They will, and they and then like, they will, they will uh, like tell. They they will just say like, chronic. Like they can just give you advice, but the advice they give you is basically bullshit or like totally not. Even or they will just guess like you because they don't yeah. not know how to deal with you. Yeah, they will yeah. just find themselves help find my like. Your situation very helpless. Like they basically don't know what to do because they are not me. Yeah, they have not been in our shoes before. So how can they relate? And that's why most of the time I feel that uh those with mental health conditions or those with chronic medical conditions they will just isolate themselves. Can you relate? Oh uh, no! Yeah, and that. also the fact that I feel that people with mental health conditions and also like. And also, like maybe chronic illnesses would make better, better like um healthcare workers. Yeah, I feel because like, they would be more understanding. Yeah, like, I know. feel like for those who are dealing with chronic health conditions and like mental health conditions at the same time, I feel like between family and friends there has to be like a mutual understanding, and not only yeah. that, there has to be like a mutual empathy. Like yeah. towards like when, okay. when like we are sharing our problems, I don't want to feel like we're being blindsided or like being mm. gaslighted and like being being given advice like, oh you should go for therapy or, oh I'm sorry I can't help you with like whatever you're going through. Oh yes. Instead of like telling us that, just give us like some self affirmation words that, yes I know I'm. I'm sorry that you have to go through this. I may not understand what you're going through, but I'm willing to be by your side and help you overcome whatever you're whatever just you're going through. Just hear us out, law. Yes. Yes. Just hear our rants. Okay. I do have a friend like that, but I got that many many years later. Only in like my late secondary school years, mm. I am still friends with her only because she. Always tells me that I will never understand what you go through. I have only gone through. She has only gone through a bit of a surgery, but she always says I will never understand what you've gone through. But no matter what, I will be by your side. Yeah, that's very um, sweet. We are that's both very also sweet. very um Greek mythology Greeks. So yeah, oh. <laughs> so, yeah uh, nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. The one thing yeah. if you are, I think you're from Stephanie, oh, I, you. I should <laughs> tell you guys. So you know, I have like friends. Obviously, we have friends outside people who have chronic illnesses or mental health conditions. Um, I feel that we only can keep those friends because they are very understanding and very empathetic to our situation. Alright. So. Even though they might not understand what we're going through, they'll be like, "Oh, you know, I'm still here to like maybe support or um, can say like, what are you frustrated about, basically?" Mm. And you know, sometimes you just want people to not give like shitty advice and just be like, um, and also the fact that um how um like. For example, when we might like just have a flare up, like we would just not be very happy, mm. or like or just physical condition flare up. Yeah. Um, we will that de- it would definitely be a f- like our mental health would definitely be affected. Yes, and I just think that how people can be more understanding as a society. Yeah, I'm just saying that um. I feel that our podcast could move towards that direction. Mm. Yeah, like, we want to be experiences. We will have fun things to share, but I feel, on a serious note, that we also have the idea of sharing to our audience that we are also capable of things. We we can yeah. do things. 
But we just need a tiny bit of help, more than normal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And I that's think why. That's the point. Yeah, and that's why with the overarching theme, I would like to say that I can do things that normal people can do as well. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Hey, it's kind of getting late, so I think yeah, we should. So oh wrap yeah. It up. Okay, let's wrap it up. So yeah. thank you for listening till now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode that we dive deep into our health, into our challenges with our health during our childhood. Um, if you like our content, please um subscribe to our YouTube, which is um the same as our Spotify. Yeah, subscribe to um, YouTube. I think we'll just put everything in Twitter the and TikTok and uh and in also next... Instagram. Yeah, and in the next episode, uh, me and Janice will be disclosing on the struggles on finding relationships and intimacy and dealing with intimacy. And I think I will be able to do something along the lines of friends because and actually um wait hold up. And actually, we plan to release the episode without any notifications or anything. Yes. So we will release it in secret, and then you guys will only know when we post it. Okay. So yeah. before we wrap up this today's episode, here's a feel the mess go Who's going to, to to share today's gossip? Okay, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. So for my one, um, a few years ago, I was like admitted to the hospital because of like a really bad stomach ache and like I had some problems, you know, which I'm not gonna share. But um, this is the short story, very short story. Um, so this is how the story goes. I was admitted, and this was during like um lockdown and like just twenty twenty because the that year was horrible, mm. and whatever. So um, my, the main doctor in the ward and the other and another of her colleague came into the room which I was in, and um. And we were like talking about like my medical stuff, but afterwards I just started chatting with the colleague like so, like a lot. And then I, and then I just excluded that um other doctor, the main doctor that came in, and I felt so bad. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, it's just like um, it's a very I don't think it's a very interesting one, but I think it was kind of embarrassing, and I I still really like both doctors still this day. So yeah, um, you might see them in future episodes. Yeah, that's a clue, but um. I'm still, I'm still seeing them around. So, um, you you guys might see them in a few fu- in future episodes. Honestly, so yeah, you might get to meet our friends too, Janice. You forgot that our yeah. friends as well. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah, you might get to meet our friends who have similar chronic illnesses. Um. So yeah, we'll be up to here. Thank yeah. you for listening. And you- Till today, till today's episode, I'm Wati, I'm Otra, I'm Janice, and thank you for listening to today's episode on Chronic Illness Pod. Bye. Bye.